and I salute you for the things that you have done for Palestine because nobody has the balls or the guts to do what you did for Palestine. And because of that, I'm here today. Thank you. We really have to pray for peace because Iran is now preparing to respond to Israel. And once Iran comes in, that Middle East crisis becomes another world war. Three now. We don't need war. If we are peace-loving South Africans, we don't need war. We need peace. And there cannot be peace in South Africa if there is no peace in Palestine. As you know that Israel is being sponsored by the West and other puppet African countries that are under the thumbs of the West, if you are in government and if you close down the embassy of Israel, I'm quite sure that you know that there are sanctions that are going to come from the West, curbing whatever businesses that will for South Africa. What do you have, what measures do you have in place to curb the sanctions that are going to definitely come if you are in government and you are going to close the Israeli embassy. This is how powerful they are. No, they are a weak state to begin with, but they have powerful friends behind them. So what measures do you have in place just in case the sanctions are imposed in the country of South Africa? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on Africa's geopolitics, economy, and changing landscape. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, African politics, economy, and increasing power. Let's continue now. We need to call for peace in the Middle East. You can't say you are Muslim and you support DA. DA that support genocide in Palestine. Any Muslim, any Muslim who votes for the DA, you must know you are an ebbler of genocide in Palestine against the Muslims. The people of Palestine are being killed. They want to wipe them off their land right in front of our face and we are not doing anything. The EFF marched to Israeli embassy. And when we were at Israeli embassy, we said, we are going to check the Woolworths products, we are going to check McDonald's products, we are going to check any shop, give us information that sells food from Israel. I did not arrive at the office after that march. McDonald's already sent me a letter. Oh, no, 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 no. We are not the same as McDonald's in Israel. Please, we are independent. We don't have those products and all of that. We are watching you. Woolworth said they've got a, a smaller quantity of products which is going to finish in a week's time from Israel. We said we don't care in a week's time. It must be removed now. People are being killed now. Remove. <laughs> we said to the EFF, we said to the EFF student command in universities, you must never accept any lecture from Israel to come and be a visiting lecture in our institutions of Ireland. <laughs> we must never accept any learning material from Israel because we are engaged in academic boycott of Israel. So, the people of Lodium have a duty to teach others, not even the ANC, support the struggle against Israel, by the way. We marched here, went to Parliament, and said to Parliament, pass a resolution sponsored by the EFF to remove the, the Israeli embassy. Parliament passed that resolution to remove the Israeli embassy. Today, today, the ANC has implemented that resolution. 
they went to International Court of Justice, ICJ. You know, when, when a person goes to court on such political matters, you must know they are artificial in the approach because they know the court processes take forever. So they are buying themselves time so that they look like they are doing something. Doing something means remove the Israeli embassy, which is practical, which can be done tomorrow. Ramaphosa came here. Ramaphosa came here during it two weeks ago. He was kneeling there up and down, pretending to be with you. <laughs> pretending to be with you. If he really cared about Muslims, before kneeling here in Lodium, was supposed to go and close the Israeli embassy, then we would have known this is a genuine person. He's got the power. Parliament has taken a decision and not with simple majority. A decisive majority said, remove Israeli embassy. Only ACDP of Mishwe, understandably so, because it's, a, it's funded by apartheid Israel, Freedom Front Plus, because they are known for segregation and invading people's properties. Patriotic Alliance, which is controlled by Jewish money, they have, no, they have no idea what they are doing. They are not in politics. They are in politics of making money. So the only organization that can take over power and make South Africa stand on the side of the Palestinian people is the EFF. No one else can do that. at least in support of the struggle of the people of Palestine, even if you want to sell out, there are three ballots there. One of those ballots you must dedicate it to Palestine and say, I'm so conflicted because my party is selling out on this, but the EFF, I shall give it at least one vote, and that vote is Palestine because I don't agree with them on land, I don't agree with them on that, but on this one, I, they shall receive at least one vote from me. We really have to pray for peace because Iran is now preparing to respond to Israel. And once Iran comes in, that Middle East crisis becomes another world war three now. We don't need war. If we are peace-loving South Africans, we don't need war. We need peace. And there cannot be peace in South Africa if there is no peace in Palestine. Thank you very much. I would like to, first of all, to thank the Commander-in-Chief, Dr. Nlozi, and everybody else who came to grace us here. Thank you so much. I'm speaking as a human being who loves other humans as well. We appreciate the EFF for standing with the people of Palestine. Every person who loves humanity, every person who loves to see peace, loves the EFF for the commendable act that they did, marching with the Muslims and every other human being in support of the Palestinians. We commend you for that and we really appreciate that. But as you know that Israel is being sponsored by the West and other puppet African countries that are under the thumbs of the West, if you are in government and if you close down the embassy of Israel, I'm quite sure that you know that there are sanctions that are going to come from the West, curbing whatever businesses that will, for South Africa, what do you have, what measures do you have in place to curb the sanctions that are going to definitely come if you are in government and you are going to close the Israeli embassy? This is how powerful they are. No, they are a weak state to begin with, 
but they have powerful friends behind them. So what measures do you have in place just in case the sanctions are imposed in the country of South Africa? Thank you so much. We're not scared of sanctions, my brother. We've got BRICS. In BRICS, we are trying to create alternative markets and economies. Let them come for sanctions against us. But we will not stop standing on the side of humanity because of scaremongering of sanctions. The world is, is evolving now. If there is something they, they say they will no longer buy from us, we'll sell it to other people. If they say to us they will no longer sell us the German machines, that will be good. We must produce our own cars and then sell to the continent and the world. Maybe it's time they do that so that we can see the importance of trading amongst ourselves as Africans. The market is there. Why South Africa doesn't have a car today, I don't know why. We say manufacturing has collapsed in South Africa. There are no jobs in South Africa, but we don't produce toothpick. After eating, everybody needs a toothpick. It's not being produced here. It comes from China. We don't produce plate, paper, paper plate, plastic plate. That plastic plate we eat in, we don't produce it here. The chairs you are sitting on, we don't produce them. But these chairs are produced through a byproduct that comes out of that uh, fuel thing at Sasol. I forgot the name of the byproduct. That byproduct, they take it from Sasol here, take it to China to produce this plastic chairs. Anything plastic is produced by that by byproduct from Sasol. The Tupperware, huh? if you take a a tap away uh, thing from a woman, you will not even. Uh, <laughs> hey. They are not saying bring back my scarf tin, but bring back the tap away. <laughs> Imagine we can build that here yeah, and revive manufacturing industry of South Africa. And not only for here. Yeah. Remember, we've got Africa. We produce here for ourselves and we sell to the continent. The people of Africa love South Africa and any product from South Africa, they will support it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salute to the government in waiting. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank the EFF for blessing us with your presence here. Some years ago, if I'm not wrong, it was 2014 or so, Commander-in-Chief and your team, we went to the Israeli government embassy in Linut on a Friday, Ramadan, repeating exactly what you have repeated to say these guys must go home. And we fully understand the reasons why our current administration is playing games. Palestine is a stand we took a long time ago. It's not a stand that we take now on elections. From its formation, the EFF has always declared to be on the side of the poor. And the dejected and rejected masses of our people and the oppressed. Every rally of the EFF, starting with the, its public lounge in Marikana, 10 years ago, every rally of the EFF has a flag of Palestine flying on top of the stage. If you go back to all the rallies of the EFF, you will never find a rally of the EFF since its formation without a Palestinian flag flying high because we are with the people of Palestine. Illegal immigration, the EFF believes in one continent, one Africa, because Africa has always been one. 
These borders were imposed on us by the Berlin, Berlin Conference in 1885, where the superpowers met. And then they put a map of South Africa and then they allocated it to each other. Britain will take this, Italy will take this, Germany will take this, and that they were allocating Africa. Then they started putting a fence. But we're never like that. But why is there such an obsession with a fence? Because border means a fence. Why are we obsessed with a fence? Which country in the world became a developed country because it had a fence? But not on the basis of this fence, this country was able to flourish. But if the fence is one of the things that you need for you to flourish, you all have fences at your homes and you are still poor. The fence didn't help you with anything. But our fence is actually madness. Because in Lesotho, there is no fence. In Botswana, there is no fence. Mara, there is a gate. Only a mad person can go and put a gate at his yard without a fence and every day when you come back you open that gate and lock it but you don't have a fence <laughs> those people live happily together in Zimbabwe Gate and McCain's went there trying to prove a point that yeah there's no fence here he was not saying something new to us we knew there was no fence there's no fence so anyone who brings drugs in South Africa or brings illegal weapons in South Africa, his nationality is not relevant as a criminal and must be dealt with as a criminal, not on the basis of which country he comes from. No one must bring, no one must bring guns into South Africa. So we're going to stop this Mozambicans and stop this Nigerian, stop this so because they are the ones who bring drugs and guns. South Africans are going to fetch, they will leave and go there to fetch them and bring them here. Because now we say our borders are secured, there's no, they will go fetch them, come back because they are South Africans. And we will not have a problem with South Africans who are selling drugs and guns and prostitution. We have to have a problem with crime and not with nationality. A criminal Nigerian who poses threat to life of South Africans must be dropped. We don't care whether you are Nigerian or Zimbabwean or South African. You bring drugs into our country, you shall be dealt with. Our problem is resolving drugs and we can resolve drugs by uniting the whole continent. Can you imagine Yusuf, if there was no fence and all these restrictions, those cars that get stolen into Mozambique will with ease go and check those cars and bring them here. They are able to steal and hide in other countries because of these borders. They use the borders to commit crime. They take from us, go and hide the other side. Without a fence, police will chase you from here. When you cross the border, they follow you to that side. There is no border in Europe. No border in Europe. So why do they want borders for us and they don't want borders for themselves? There is free movement in Europe. They go anywhere. You can wake up, eat breakfast in Italy, have lunch in Germany, and then sleep in Paris without anyone asking you for a document. No one. Even you once you get a Shanghai visa. Free movement. Why? They made trade easily. They made movement of goods and people easily. They trade amongst themselves. Why can't we do that as Africans? We've got high unemployment now. Including high unemployment of teachers, 
I was shocked that there's even unemployment of doctors. You go to school for seven years, and then we complain at the same time in our hospitals, we don't have doctors, but they are unemployed doctors. But these doctors were not supposed to march. They were supposed to just get a transport and go to the nearest country. Their skill will be welcomed in those many other countries. This obsession of wanting to stay in South Africa alone, as if South Africa is the only place with opportunities, is what denies you, South Africans, an opportunity to prosper because they instilled in us a mind of superiority. We think we are America of, South Af of Africa. That's why you can speak about, no, Africa and South Africa, as if South Africa is not Africa. Why they benefit from this division? Because the unity of South Africa threatens them. Imagine if we were to do an a African currency based and supported by the minerals of Africa. Dollar will be nothing compared to that. Dollar will be nothing compared to that. The pound is what it is because of its gold reserves, yet they don't have a gold mine. We alone, we are number one platinum producer in the world. Ourselves and Zimbabwe alone, we are, no one can touch us with platinum. The next in line who has a platinum, which takes us to 85% or so, is Russia. So why is Zimbabwe, South Africa, and Russia not coming together and determine the platinum price? A platinum price is determined by people who don't have platinum because of these divisions that we're having. Why can't we open this continent and get ESCOM to electrify the whole of Africa and then they pay electricity to us? You deny yourself an opportunity. We can build railway lanes. We've got capacity in South Africa. From Cape to Cairo. The, 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 the transport system that interconnects the whole continent. So that you guys can wake up in the morning, go and do some businesses there, and then sleep this side, come from that other side with ease. And that's how we prosper. The ANC can't be trusted, my brother. I mean, we all know that. But there are times where you need to bring your enemies closer so that you can finish them off. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, African politics, economy, and increasing power. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned. Tell us what you think in the comment section. Like and share the video, and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our African videos. It's the best way to support us.